Welcome to the module concerning threat modeling and threat classification. The module will introduce you to one of the methods of threat classification and point out the merits of such an approach in the security policy development process. Let's specify what threat modeling actually is. It consists of the identification, assessment, and description of threats to computer system security. We should try to analyze the computer system from the perspective of a person who would like to break into it. To put it simply, attack methodology is as follows. The attacker has to gain access to the system. Our task is therefore to identify the ways through which an attacker can do that. For example, VPN remote connections or the possibility to log into an unprotected computer can be classified as entry points. This depends on the type of system. Nevertheless, we should continue describing all the threats. The next step is to list and describe the resources to be protected. This shouldn't be limited to a general statement that the whole system is to be protected. The list should be detailed to ensure that every element that needs to be protected will be protected. In the case of the database server, which may be the first resource to be protected, we don't have to list each and every record of the database, unless we're trying to create a security policy of this one database. The next element of threat modeling is to examine and describe data flow paths. This involves the description of how the computer establishes a connection with the server. Can every computer establish the connection with the server? Or are there some specific requirements, such as port number or the newest version of the antivirus program? All possible paths should be described because the attackers can use any of them. No system can be completely protected. This is simply impossible. We can, however, divide the system into more or less protected subsystems. We should define the trust boundary, represented in the diagram with the letter T. Clearly defined trust boundaries later become the elements under protection. Both a physical computer and a subnet of servers can be defined as trust boundaries. A special type of such a subnet is the DMZ, demilitarized zone, which requires a separate trust boundary. This pertains to every subnet in our computer system. The list of protected elements should be as detailed as is required to reflect the actual configuration of the system resources. Each resource will be assigned an individual security value, or level. This can be simplified so as to comprise high, low, medium, or none. Application designers perform threat modeling in a more formal way. There is a separate branch of IT devoted to threat modeling exclusively. The diagram you see in the slide is a generalized representation of steps we've discussed before. Application designers had to define system entry points, that is, how the application communicates with users and other applications. Moreover, they had to examine so-called case studies. That's different ways in which the application is used and the consequences of each kind of possible use. Also, they had to define the resources the application uses. Such an analysis should help the designer to determine which type of threats the application may be susceptible to. To assume that viruses are the only threat to the operating system is a severe mistake. The lack of a detailed analysis may result in a situation where you focus on a threat that concerns your system to a very limited degree. Viruses are common, but even if your computer gets infected by a virus, it won't have a very serious consequence. 
Without a detailed analysis, we will miss the most serious threats. And if we're not aware of them, we won't be protected against them.